من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار نعوذ بالله تعالى من النار اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت إذا شئت تجعل الحزن سهلا فسهل أمورنا برحمتك يا رب العالمين I would just remind you that one of the etiquette of a circle of knowledge is that when the speaker is talking the audience should pay attention and what, that's what the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum used to be when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to speak they all pay attention they all listen to him carefully and that's why whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said we are getting it because the way the Sahaba used to listen to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they give us in details of every word the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Why? Because they listen with their hearts and their ears. And they do not speak. Why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is speaking? Unless if they have a question, then they will ask question to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's the way it should be of the etiquette of listening to a speaker and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his beloved companion. So before I start my speech tonight, I just want to thank the audience who are present with us, brothers and sisters, old and young. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your coming and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you back home healthy, safe and rewarded fully Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen and I also want to thank the organizers our youth halaqa boys and girls for their dedication, their commitment their motivation and their presence on this project on this good action which is one of the most beloved action and deeds in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith that which means the most beloved action in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happiness that you bring in the heart of any fellow Muslim. The purpose of this week was collecting some funds for the orphans, the Muslim or orphans in the whole world. And that's one of the good action that you are doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it on the scales of your good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, I mean, reward those who are giving and donating. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their wealth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase their wealth, Allahumma Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, do you know what's the title for topics, uh, the, the speech of today? No? You just came? Nobody? What is the title? What are we going to speak about? Any, anybody? Any volunteer? 
Are you serious? You just came in? MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. So you're all seeking knowledge, it doesn't matter. Yes. Oh, no, ses parents, MashaAllah. Très bien, mon frère. Mais je vais le faire en anglais. Hein? Est-ce que tout le monde comprend l'anglais ici? Oui. Je vais, je vais essayer d'être simple le plus que je peux pour que vous compreniez, malgré que je vais utiliser seulement les mots simples que vous comprenez en français, Inch'Allah. So the topic today, as our brother just mentioned, is honoring our parents. The topic today is for you, the youth. Is everyone here believe and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Raise your hand. If you believe in Allah and you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. All of you, yes? So this topic is for all of us, brothers and sisters, and especially our youngster. And I'm sure that the parents here, they will be happy to listen because we are addressing their children. We are addressing the future generation of this religion. So honoring our parents, you have to understand, and this is a message for you, youth. Your duty is to do your part towards your parents. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask each one of you. And He's going to hold accountable each one of you within your capacity and your ability. And it doesn't matter whether your parents are Muslim or not, whether your parents are living together or separated. It doesn't matter. What matters is you, your responsibility, your duties towards your parents. As I said, each one of us on the Day of Judgment is going to stand alone in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is going to ask each one of us, how did you treat your parents? This question, you have to prepare an answer from now. You're not going to wait until you're going to turn 80 to think about it. You have to prepare an answer for now. And you have to prepare a right answer. You, can, you cannot deviate. You cannot play. You cannot fake. It has to be something true, something honest, the way you treat your parents. When we look to the Qur'an, there are different ayat, verses from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us every time. I will just recite a few of them. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verses 83, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا you go to Surah An-Nisa 36. وَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا You go to Surah Al-An'am 151. قُلْ تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا In Surah Al-Isra 23. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا In Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 8 وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا Surah Luqman, number 14 وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْهِ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكِ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرُ in Surah Al-Ahqaf, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا So in every ayah, <coughs> Allah is mentioning after worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, without associating any partner with Him, what comes next? 
وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Now the question we should ask ourselves all, not only the youth, what does it mean الْإِحْسَانُ إِلَى الْوَالِدَيْنِ Excuse me. In the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned بِرُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا If you, maybe once, you heard the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith of Jibreel, when he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he was asking him, what is Islam? What is Iman? And then he asked him about Al-Ihsan. What is Al-Ihsan? Some of you knows what is the answer from the Prophet ﷺ when he was asked about Al-Ihsan? Anybody else? No? He said, Al-Ihsan, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَكُ Al-Ihsan is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like <coughs> You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like you are seeing Allah. And if you don't see Him, you know that He sees you. So you know that Allah is watching you. That is the definition of Al-Ihsan. And it's the highest quality that a person can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every act of worship you do, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Every act of worship you do. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. He is watching you. He is supervising you. How are you going to react? What are you going to do? What are you going to say? Every step that you will be doing, He is there. So when it comes to Al-Ihsan, Ihsana, the answer is that everything that can bring joy and happiness to the soul of your parents. Anything that can make them happy, joyful, then can make them so, you know, excited, so pleased, it is considered ihsan. Anything. It could be a word, it could be a smile, it could be jazakallah. A hug, it could be a kiss, it could, it could be a help, a service that you provide for them. Anything that will bring joy and happiness for them, it is considered as Al-Ihsan. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So you can say a definition for Al-Ihsan, any, any goodness that you're going to provide for your parents, any kindness, your time that you will be giving for them, a service that you will be providing for them, a wealth that you have you're going to share with them, forgiveness because they are human beings so they can do shortcoming, you forgive them for the shortcoming, you show respect to them, you love them as much as you can, this is ihsan to your parents. Is it clear what is the meaning of Ihsan to your parents? Anything good that you can do and do not underestimate anything because something which is small for our sight as a human being but in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is something huge. It is something important. It is something heavy in the scales of the good deeds on the day of judgment. So do not underestimate anything else. That is Ihsan to your parents. Anything that you can do to make them happy, consider it as Ihsan. Allah is going to be pleased with you because you are doing something that will bring happiness to them. I just want to share with you and focus tonight because it's a huge topic, it's a long topic because when sometimes we are long in our speech, we forget. We leave the room, we are going to forget whatever we heard. But I want, I want to focus on some points 
that we can learn from Surah Al-Isra. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So the first thing he starts, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Remember, when you hear this word, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا which means you have to be gentle to your parents. You have to treat them in the best manners. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا You have to be kind. You have to be merciful. This is all Ihsan. So remember, one word in Arabic, but in English you can give it a lot of interpretation. Mercy, kindness, the best of manners that you show to your parents, kindness, gentleness, and so on and so forth. This is all Ihsan. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ This is something serious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not say to them, uf. He used a word with two letters. And they said, the scholar, they said, this is one of the shortest word that we can say in the time of anger or in the time we don't want to hear anything. We don't want to talk to anybody else. We don't want to do anything else. Uf. Allah is saying to us, don't say that word. Uf. You know, nowadays, we're not saying only uf, but we say huge and long sentences full of disgrace, disrespect to our parents. Is it true? Yes or no? Can you be honest? You are in the house of Allah, you cannot lie. Am I right or wrong? I can't hear anything. Yes? It is the truth that we are living nowadays. A lot of us, they don't only say uff, but they say other stuff. I don't want to share because this is not appropriate in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and maybe the shaitan is going to play with our head instead of avoiding saying those words we're gonna say them why because we are going to listen to the shaitan and that's what the prophet ﷺ told us when we are angry we cannot control our emotion and the shaitan will play with our head like we play with the remote control do this say this and we will do it and we will say it that's the fact However, we just need to remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning uf. So any word that is more than uf that you will say, it's going to be against you. And remember what the Prophet sallallahu said about those words. A person can say a word without paying attention. And that word will throw him or her in the hellfire. Just a word. That's what the Prophet ﷺ is saying. And another word, a person will say without paying attention, that word will put that person in the highest level in Jannah. So that's why before we should say anything else, we should like revise ourselves. Is this word going to be for me or against me? Is it going to be in my scale of my good deeds or my bad deeds. If we all do this, trust me, we are going to say only sweet and good words that are going to witness for us on the Day of Judgment. However, if we do not pay attention and if we do not think before we say what we are planning to say, then we are going to regret and the harm is going to be there our parents are going to be hurt our parents are going to be in pain from just a word that we said so that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ do not say off to them do not hurt them with any word avoid raising your voice in front of them. Don't raise your voice.
Do you understand? Do not raise. We should not raise our voice. If they raise their voice, Allah is going to hold them accountable. But as a son, as a daughter, we do not have the right to raise our voice on our parents. Allah is going to hold us accountable. And this action is going to turn against us on the Day of Judgment. You raised your voice on your father. You raised your voice on your mother. And you were not supposed to do so. What are you going to say? What will be your reason? I had a valid reason. I was right and they were wrong. Is that a valid reason to raise your voice? Even if you know that they are doing something wrong, you should correct them in the best way, the best manner. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, you have to be wise enough if you see something wrong with your parents to address that issue in the best way. You have to humble yourself. Even you see that your parents are wrong and you are right 100%, you should humble yourself and you should address the issue in the best way. That you are not going to raise your voice. Or you are doing something haram and this is not permissible. And the Prophet ﷺ said this and the Prophet the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and your voice is going higher and higher. Why? Even the Prophet even in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wadru ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'idati hasana. When you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be wise enough and you have to address the issue with wisdom and calmly and nicely. Even the Prophet sallallahu he was commanded to be humble with his companion and address any matter with humbleness in a nice way, not in a rough way, not in a rude way. Do not interrupt them if they are talking. If they are talking, you listen to them. If they finish, then you want to say something, then you say something. But if they are speaking, listen to them. Avoid any harsh word. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state in the Quran, See the smallest word, of, and then he said, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Do not say any harsh word. Don't confront them using rough and rude words. You have to be careful. Especially if they tell you to do something that you, do want, you don't want to do. Why don't you take a shower? No, I don't want to. I just took a shower yesterday or a day before and you start screaming and, and arguing with them if they tell you why don't you go clean your room you're not going to argue and fight with them as a Muslim you should listen to them are they asking you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are they asking you to disobey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cleanness is half of our religion so if they tell you to do something like that, you're not going to argue or disrespect them because you don't like to clean or you don't like to take a shower or you don't like to do your homework or you don't like to come to the masjid. And say to them a good word, a word that is going to put peace, comfort in their hearts. A word that will make them so happy. Have you ever say a good word to your parents? Can you give me an example? What do you say? Any example. And don't feel embarrassed. Wallahi. It's not embarrassing. You should be proud. If you say anything good to your parents, you should be proud. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Naam. MashaAllah. What does it mean? Okay. Très bien. Anything else? Because no matter what you're going to say, if you're going to say something, it will be sealed in their heart. 
until yes Ah, I take Saha. Is that? Okay. I take Saha, which means may Allah give you good health. Yes. Shukran. Thank you. Whatever you're gonna say good to your parents is going to be sealed in their heart. Trust me. I can give you my own example. When my son was in the primary school and when it's a snow day, when he goes out from the house in the car, there is snow, he will write, I love you, Abby, with the snow. So when I get out and I see that, it makes me happy. And I still remember that. And I, re I, I don't like the snow, but I like the snow just because of what he did. So anything you say to your parents, it will be sealed in their hearts. They will remember it. Trust me. They will remember it until they die. So always think to say good words to your parents. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا So we talked about even when you see them doing something wrong. And I remember now the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He was advising his father. You know, in Surah Maryam, there are a few ayat, just Ibrahim speaking to his father in the best way, very humble way, even though he was a prophet, a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his father, he was not only worshiping idols, he used to make idols himself and sell them. But then Ibrahim, he goes to him, don't worship. Don't worship those idols, my father. They don't hear, nor they see. Oh, my father, don't listen to the shaitan. Don't follow the shaitan. Don't worship the shaitan. Oh, my father, follow me. I have guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was giving advice to his father in the best way. He was not arrogant. He was not harsh. He was not rude, alayhi salat. والسلام واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة and be humble with them out of mercy it's very important that you humble yourself you should not feel arrogant and especially what we hear nowadays sometimes oh my parents they don't know oh my parents they are still living in the old age Oh, my parents, they are still living in the 70s and 80s or boomers or just name it. We hear those statements from our youth many times. Why? You should humble yourself and you should not say those words about your parents. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا so, وَخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الدُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said a dua that we all should make dua for our parents. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the way your parents are with you. And I'm sure as long as you are here, all your parents must be good parents. I'm not saying that we are, as a parents, we are perfect. We all have our shortcomings. We all are sinners. But the way you are here, it is a good sign. Your parents, they want the best out of you. So always make dua for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us what we say to our parents. My Lord, be merciful to them as they raised me when I was young. You have to understand as a son or daughter, if you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to please your parents. 
as long as they're not asking you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with you, see if your parents are pleased with you. And this is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The pleasure of the Lord lies in the pleasure of the parent. So make sure that you are pleasing your parents. And when we talk about the parents, they are your paradise or your hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu he mentioned about the mother where he said that paradise lies under the feet of the mother. And when he said about the father, the father is the middle of paradise, the door of paradise. So make sure that you are pleasing your parents. And the Prophet ﷺ gave more right and priority to the mother three times because of three things that the mother does which the father does not. The mother is the one who holds you on her womb for nine months, which father does not. The mother is the one who gave birth of you. And then she is the one who feeds you for two months, two years, breastfeeding you. So that's why they both have values in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why they are both your Jannah or your hellfire. So you are the one who is going to be choosing. What do I choose for myself? Do I want to be in Jannah or hellfire? So the way you treat your parents will teach you and led you whether you go to Jannah and to go to the hellfire. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all on this gathering to be able to treat our parents the best way. And remember, the way you treat your parents, the kids or your kids will treat you the same way. Even if you're going to tell me I'm not going to get married, I'm not going to have kids, no worry. Allah is going to send you someone to treat you the way you are treating your parents. You respect them, you will be respected. You disrespect them, you will be disrespected. This is a promise from the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So be careful the way you treat your parents. Respect them, honor them, don't lie to them, always say the truth, always be humble with them, always listen to them as long as they are not asking you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will enter Jannah. Any questions before we conclude? Is there going to be a question? Q&A? The question are ready or not? Yes? You have a question? I just, uh, I just want to remind you about tomorrow. Uh, the youth are also, uh, also organizing uh, or holding a family night. There would be a lot of food, games, hanna for the children. And all the prophet will go for the orphans, uh, the Muslim orphans of the world. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make it easy and grant them success. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all for coming. Jazakumullah.
C'est correct si je réponds en anglais. Uh, did you hear the question? No. Uh, so the brother is saying that it's easy for him to love his mother uh, than his father. Huh? Huh? Ah, sure. Now, what to do in order for you to balance this, right? Okay, les amis, we are not done yet. Can you sit down? It's just a few minutes and then we will let you go. Regardez mes frères. First thing, remember that you are in the house of Allah. You should not raise your voice. All right? And as I said, we are not done. You should keep silent. You should, should keep quiet. Listen to the question. Maybe it will benefit you. If it doesn't benefit you, it will benefit other people. And if you are going to behave this way every time, this is not the right way. As a Muslim, you should Respect first the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a speaker I did not let you go or uh, you didn't ask even permission to leave because if you know the etiquette of the circle of knowledge if you want to go you have to seek permission you cannot leave just by yourself all right so please it's just few minutes and then we will let you go so the brother was uh, asking he can show love to his mother, not the way for his father. So he is asking, how can we balance, right? Uh, it's true because sometimes uh, for the boys, they feel more comfortable with their mother than their father, especially if the father is not a person who is, uh, who is open, talkative, or a person you can communicate with easy. He always wants to keep a distance for him to be respected. But it's not, I mean, it's not a reason for you not to show love and kindness to your father. Even though he is keeping his distance, but you try your best to show love and mercy and compassion to, to the father, yes. Uh, he doesn't uh, at all. Est-ce que ton père il est ouvert ou non? Mais est-ce que tu as essayé de ta part? Il faut essayer parce que je suis sûr si tu vas essayer, il va pas te dire non. Parce que tu es, ton, tu es son fils. Donc il faut, il faut prendre des, 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 des étapes. Il faut essayer de prendre des pas. Et il ne faut pas avoir honte parce que c'est ton père. Et je suis sûr qu'il ne va pas te rejeter. ou Inch'Allah. Euh... Inch'Allah. Well, to show gratitude to your parents, you should always appreciate everything they do for you. Because I wish each one of us can see the moment they spend for, uh, for them, for us to be raised up. If we can see those moment, moment after moment, the way I mean, during the pregnancy, after we were born, uh, when they feed us, when they clothe us, when they take us outside for fun, when they do everything to make us happy. If we think about those moments, 
we will show gratitude to our, to our parents and we will always be thankful from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way they raised us the way they are giving effort the way they they do everything they could for us to be healthy to be good Muslim to be well dressed to be uh, anything they wish anything good they wish for us so if we have this way of thinking we're going to appreciate and thank them for everything they do for us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best huh? Ah, la la la. Non, 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 c'est pas ça. That's a very good question because we know in Islam backbiting is haram. So if you hear them backbiting anybody else you should nicely address them and speak to them and remind them the way Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam reminded his father who was a disbeliever making idols worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you always can remind them in the best way so that they will accept it and they will stop from doing something which is not permissible and especially backbiting because we all know that is forbidden uh, whether from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu but always address them in a proper manner with the best way and wisdom. Yes. If you told your mom what? Use the car, yeah. <laughs> it happened? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good question. <laughs> so he's saying that if he asked his mother to use the car, she says no and he asked the father he says yes so if if you're gonna use the car you're going to please your father but if you are not going to use the car you're going to please your mother right now if there is a benefit and there is a harm you you should be aware what is the benefit and what is the harm that will bring to your parents in case you drive or you don't drive so it's going to be your decision whether to drive or not to drive based on the benefit and the harm that will be after you drive the car and Allah knows best because you know your parents more than me maybe if you're gonna drive the car there will be a fight between them if you don't there will be no fight right so you are uh, I mean the judge but you have to be fair you don't look only to yourself and benefit yourself but you have to look on the benefit that will happen between your parents and the harm that can happen between them and Allah knows best Well, if the father passed away, there is a lot of things that you can do. Number one is to make dua. Even when our parents die, and this is based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where he said that when the son of Adam dies, all his good deeds are going to stop except three. And he mentioned 
وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُو لَهُ And a righteous son or daughter that make dua for the father. Even in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, every time we make dua for a passing father or mother, Allah will raise their rank in Jannah. And that parent will ask Allah, how come? And Allah will answer, because of the dua of your son or your daughter. So always make, make dua for passing father or mother, especially during the Salat. Make sure that you pray in every Salat, you make a dua, specific dua for your parents in the sujood, whether it's Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib or Aisha. Make sure that there is a rak'ah or every rak'ah, you are going to specify a dua for them. You can also make sadaqah on behalf of your father. Of your father. Any sadaqah that will benefit the Muslim, like building a masjid, a masjid, building an Islamic school, or digging a well. This sadaqah is a continuous sadaqah. On behalf of your passing father, it will contribute and add him more good reward uh, in this worldly life and in the hereafter. Keep good relationship with his friends and his family members. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. If you want to uh, be kind to your parents, to your passing parents, you have to keep good connection with his friend and his family members. And this is how we can uh, be honoring our parents after they pass away. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala knows best. Thank you.